What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Draymond Green Show. We have another great episode for you all today. Just as a reminder, the top of show every week will be on Amazon app before it goes to all the platforms, so be sure to subscribe there. However, you know you can subscribe anywhere you get your platform, um, excuse me, your podcast, any platform. You listen to it, it will be there. You just will have the first opportunity to hear it live on AMP. So if you want to check that out, we always have that option. But let's get into it, man. We got a um, a very busy time in the NBA right now. The playoff stands just sitting here. Uh, Jackson, the playoff standings are like every day someone's moving. Uh, last night you had uh, us get a road win finally after 11-game losing streak. Uh, we're sitting on the plane playing cards last night, and Steph goes, yeah, man, number eight. And it was actually just hard to, like, believe. Like, eight row wins is absolutely ridiculous, but I'm not stating anything that you don't know. However, I'll take it. Uh, we, we we got one. Now we need to get another one. Uh, we need to get another one here tomorrow here in Dallas. Um, it's a very big game. As you know, we're right there in the standings. Actually, who we flipped back and forth with the other night, uh, well, last night. And so uh, Dallas was on the road at Memphis with a big fourth quarter lead, um, and they lost it. Memphis came back. They took the game. Dallas drops a little bit in the standings. But in saying that, uh, we are one game or maybe even a half a game uh, apart in the standings from Dallas. And so tomorrow is a huge game. Uh, they've had Kyrie back for a couple games now. Uh, Luka has still been out. But for some reason, I expect Luka to play tomorrow, which, quite frankly, you always want guys and teams to play their best players. Not that Luka's play, not playing for a good reason. Uh, he's dealing with an injury. But I think for me, um, like, playing against teams with their best players and, like, obviously Luka's one of the best players in the NBA – like, that gets you up. The NBA stretch run is upon us. Huge matchups across the league as my dubs and I battle with the teams in the West for playoff position. Going to be a lot of fun on TV, but what if you could actually be at some of these games? For last-minute amazing deals on tickets, not just the dubs, but your favorite NBA team, check out Game Time, the fastest-growing ticketing app in the U.S. And it doesn't stop with the NBA. Game Time has tickets to the NHL, NCAA basketball games, even concert and comedy shows, too. So if you're in Phoenix and want to see KD try to make a run with the Suns, Game Time has your seats. If you're in Boston and hoping to see Jason Tatum and the Celtics work their way to the finals again, Game Time has your seats. Or you want to see Chris Rock anytime soon, download the Game Time app and redeem code GREEN for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, download the Game Time app and enter code GREEN. That's G-R-E-E-N for $20 off. No matter where you live, get out and have some fun this week. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Like that, that like those are games you get up for. Like it's it's impossible, as you've heard me say before, it's impossible to get up for every NBA game. Now in saying that, nine games left in the season, where where we are in the standings, every game matters. So it's not that, but you want to play like like that's where signature moments is created in the NBA. Like when you playing marquee guys, when you playing in marquee games, and so uh, definitely looking forward to Luca. Uh, getting back healthy, obviously, if that's not tomorrow, uh, you know, hopefully pretty soon. Uh, it's great for the NBA. It's great for everybody. Uh, we have nine games left in the season. That is five at home and four on the road. I think that bodes well for us because, quite frankly, we win more at home. And we're pretty good at home. We're really good at home. Not so much on the road. Uh, and saying that I, you know, look at our remaining four games that we do have on the road, and I think, they're very winnable games. Um, hasn't been quite that way for us, but wouldn't it be amazing? Like, wouldn't it just rack everybody's brain if, like, the Warriors win the next four games on the road, headed into the playoffs, and everybody's been talking, like, all oh, that garbage all year. And then you want to go in, and, you know, you want to go on your um, 
screens and stuff and say, oh, man, they can't win on the road. And then that's followed by. But they close out the season strong on the road and just kind of put fear in everyone's hearts going into the playoffs. I think that'll be interesting. On my run of show, uh, my rundown, you know, where I give my topics and stuff Jackson has on there. Um, can the Warriors win in the playoffs without Wiggins or Gary? Um, and to answer that, uh, I, it'd be tough. Like, two of your best wing defenders, Dante's incredible wing defender as well. Um, but it'd be tough. You know, you're talking two guys, uh, super athletic, two of the more athletic guys on your team. Let's not understate that um, because that's huge, especially when you get in the playoffs, you start playing against different schemes. And sometimes you just need that super athletic guy to, like, break the wall. You know, like uh, Joe Dumars said to me, as you all may know, Joe Dumars is like a father to me. Uh, so many things that I know in life and, like, just taught me in life, the possibilities in life, like, taught me so much. And I remember back in the day, Joe D telling me, like, Draymond, you need fence benders. I'm like, what the hell is that, Joe D? He's like, you know, sometimes you just need the guy to bend that fence back. So they bend the fence. And then your defense can attack. I, your offense can attack. I didn't understand that when I was in college or high school because I didn't understand the NBA game. I totally get that now, like, and pretty much what he was just saying is you need a guy who can get in the paint, drive and kick, or get to the paint and break the defense down to get the first domino to fall. So the way Steve Kerr says, to get the, once you get the first domino to fall, then everything else starts to fall from there. Then you swing, now they're playing, the, you know, you're attacking closeout. I said all that to say, that is Wiggins. Like, that is Wiggins for this team. So as important as he is defensively, that's who he is for this team as well. And so you definitely miss that. And then Gary, obviously get us getting Gary back, it's huge. Uh, Gary is a 6-2 lob threat. Me and Loon always laugh about what we call GP the 6-2-5 man. Um, however, he's one of the best lob threats I've played with, which is absolutely insane. But uh, his hands on the defensive end, like, that'll help everything. So to answer your question, Yes, we we do need both of them, like, and, and hope to get them back. But speaking of which, I want to let you all know how absolutely ridiculous most of you people are at life. Like, the fact that a rumor about Andrew Wiggins, I don't know if it's true. I'm not here to confirm whether it's true or not. I really don't care. Like, it ain't got nothing to do with me. Like, um, I, I you know, you hear stuff like that, and you care for, like, him and her, like, and their children, you know? Like, so I, I care from that perspective. But, like, whether what y'all saying is true or not really, like, has no bearing on my life, nor does it have any bearing on y'all life. The fact that basketball, and I always say this on this podcast, like, the fact that basketball, that people are so bad at evaluating basketball that you start to run with someone's personal life to tr try to decide, like, why they're not playing basketball? Like, imagine if somebody, if, if you were missing time at your job and somebody started a whole rumor about, like, your kids not being yours and, like, yeah, yeah, like, that's ridiculous, man. Now, again, I'm not here to say whether it's true or false. I don't know. Not my business. But point being, it's not yours either. Like, y'all are so thirsty to know what's going on in someone's life that that becomes the thing. He better have some cold, hard evidence if you're going to make that a thing. And quite frankly, I've just seen people talking. Like, I've seen no evidence of anything. You just see people talking. That's insane. That's nuts. Like, the fact that people are so nosy and so consumed on what someone else do in their life, not basketball, in their life, that that is the story, that's the thing, with no confirmation of nothing? Sometimes people disgust me. Like, we live in a disgusting world. It's disgusting. That is ridiculous. And like I said, 
whether it's true or false, I don't know if the world will ever know. Quite frankly, I don't think it matters for the world to ever know if it is or isn't. The fact that it's a thing with nothing to show is absurd. What y'all have to remember, man, is people, kids got to live with that. So to just start saying that, man, I don't know. That's ridiculous. It's cringeworthy. It's cringeworthy. It actually, it actually makes me lose more and more hope for humanity. It is disgusting. So in saying that, yes, we do need wigs back. Yes, we do need GP back. But as you know, you got to roll with what you got. Hopefully we'll get GP back here sooner. Um, and Wigs, we'll see. But, like, if you're not going to talk facts, stop gossiping. Like, and when I say talk facts, I have the proof of blah, blah, blah. Stop gossiping. Stop. Like, you don't know what someone is dealing with, and then you make them deal with that? What if that's not what the person's dealing with? Stop it. It's disgusting. Jesus Christ, people are ridiculous. In switching topics, my Spartans are back in the Sweet 16. The GOAT, Mr. March himself, Tom Izzo, is in his 15th Sweet 16 in 25 years as the head coach of Michigan State. I thought that was an incredible stat. We don't count Sweet 16s at Michigan State. We don't hang banners for Sweet 16s at Michigan State. We don't even talk about them at Michigan State. So it's incredible. And Iz is one of the GOATs. That's not to be debated. I don't do Izzo slander from anyone. We don't do that. We are gonna keep it real culture. The defensive clinic that was put on display against Marquette, we saw number 11, Big East player of the year. That brother didn't look like he wanted to be on the floor. I put out a tweet. I thought it was, this, this actually is along the same lines as Wigan. I thought it was crazy that I'm watching that game and they're like, we, can you find Waldo? Like, his dad doesn't want to be on screen. He just asks for privacy. He doesn't want to be on TV. And then they, like, do everything they can to find the guy and actually find him. He actually asked y'all, like, I don't want to be on TV. And I tweeted, I see why he didn't want to be on TV. His newest, he knew his son wasn't showing up. He didn't want to show face. No, but honestly, uh, what AJ, Tyson, J.A., the guys that was guarding, what they did to him was beautiful. Totally took him out the game. Michigan State shot awful from three. Awful. I think we made it two or three threes. Great shooting team shot awful from three. Dominated the game. Dominated the game. Tom Izzo has this saying. He always tells us, you get me the first game of the weekend, I'll get you the second one. And man, by the time you see him, we play Friday that first game. By the time you see him Sunday morning, bags under his eyes. He hasn't slept. Like, love coach looks ridiculous. But you see these other coaches, they well rested, hair slicked back, looking good. They happy. They lose to Izzo. You will never see a team go into a game against Tom Izzo coach team more prepared. Will not happen. Play four years there, never happened. Won't. It's not a thing. Our guards showed up, man. Tyson. Tyson Walker showed up. A.J. Hogar showed up. Big shot Joey Buckets showed up. And the way Matty Sissoko was guarding the big fella, I tip my hat to the young fellas. Now we got the Sweet 16. We got Kansas State. I got a lot of bets going on this. Jacob Puller, looking for Mike Beasley. Some of y'all, somebody tell Bees to hit me, or I'll hit Bees. Need to bet. Mitch Richmond, 
Run TMC, the Warriors legend, Hall of Famer, I'm looking for you. Spartan Dogs, we here, we coming to take. Our path to the Final Four is a beautiful one. It's a beautiful one. And I'm looking at this Elite Eight like, oh, we're going to match up with Tennessee. That's deja vu. My second, my, my second Final Four, you know who I beat to go to the Final Four? Tennessee. Deja vu. But I feel it. As soon as I looked at our bracket, I said, oh, man, that's a beautiful path to the Final Four because when you're, when, when, when you're a, a, a disciple of Izzo, the first thing you do when you get a when you get a bracket is you look at your path to the final four. Again, we don't count Sweet Sixteens. For those of you that do, that's incredible. It's great. It's not a thing at Michigan State. It's just not a thing. It's levels to this. I saw something that said, "Is Michigan State a blue blood?" Well, we quite quite frankly we green, but I get your point for sure. 100%. You get it. Shout out to my Spars. Can't wait for them to get it done on Thursday. Last but not least, before we get out of here, the MVP race. By the way, do, uh, Jackson want me to talk about uh, Kyrie not, not taking Dylan Brooks' jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. 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 Joel Embiid and Giannis Antetokounmpo is who I feel like the MVP race has come down to. Uh, Joker, incredible year. Uh, as of late, he slipped, and those guys has continued to ascend. As of late, the Denver Nuggets has slipped, and those two teams has continued to ascend. Both players are absolutely amazing. Um, Giannis the other day had a perfect triple-double, uh, which was great. Triple-double numbers, 100% from the field, 100% from the three. Incredible game. Joel continues to do what Joel has been doing. They took a tough loss last night at home versus the Bulls, but Joel has been doing it. I think it's important how they close out the season. They've been winning. That's a, like I said, that's a tough loss last night. It's important to see how they close out the season. Uh, we know how the Bucs close out the season. The Bucs ain't really losing many games. Um, so, right now in the MVP race, I think it's Joel. Uh, I think it's Joel's award to lose. I think the way he loses that award is his team starts losing because Joel going to put up Joel numbers. Joel going to do what Joel been doing. It's Joel's award to lose. It's interesting how much things are changing. You look at the standings, they're changing. You look at this MVP stuff, is changing. Joel should get his first MVP this year. I don't expect Philly to hit some crazy losing streak um, and be that they won't do that. It should be Joel's to lose. But, like, let's, let's discuss something. How much should individual games, um, shots, like the, like uh, MB's game winner a couple weeks ago. Like, how much does that matter in the conversation? The reality is this. When you think about, like, a Heisman moment, right? Like, you have those moments. And, like, people will go back to it. Like, there's the Heisman moment right there. The reality is, is, like, at this point in the season, you should have some of those moments because those plays, like, put you on the forefront and they boost you. And so, at this point in the season, I think that's a thing. But it's hard to say that all year unless it's like some crazy marquee game because it's just so many games. Like 82 games, it's hard to say like one, one buzzer beater or something, it takes the cake. Like I said, in Joel's case, I think it does because it's just so fresh. Um, everything's so close. And so every big moment that you can have right now matters. But in most cases, I don't think it really matters in the NBA. Um, just like I said, it's just so many games. Like when you're playing 11 games in a college season, that Heisman moment, yeah, yeah, it matters in those 11 games. But 82, it's tough to say those things matter. And saying that 
Giannis' perfect triple double matters in that in those standings because it's so new, it's so fresh, it's right now. It's eleven games left. It's tw- ten games left. Nine games for some team, so it matters right now. But over the grand scheme of things, over the course of the season, like the entire season, unless you hit like shots like Steph at OKC uh, back in 2016, I think it was. Like unless it's shots like that, it's tough to say those are like MVP breaking moments. And saying that, I think Joel's helped give him more of a boost. Game winner, they on the streak, bam for Tracy. I think Giannis' perfect triple-double helps because it's right now. Not so much. Do you think individual like matchups matter? Like Joel, when they play the Bucs, for example, the Sixers are 2-1 and one against the Bucs this year. On April 2nd, they play at Milwaukee with the week left in this regular season. I feel like people are going to be sort of keying in on that individual matchup. But do you think that ma- they're not always guarding each other? Like, Does performance against each other matter in the MVP race? It's not mano to a mano, mano a mano, right? It's not uh, Joel's garden, Giannis, and Giannis play well, or Giannis is guard. It's who dominates the game, who leads their team to a win. You know, like, that could matter because everyone's watching that game. You know, like, you got voters. These are people. These are human beings. They're watching that game. And so you don't know the slightest thing that could tilt someone. You know, like... All you need is, like, one little edge because that person's going to take that pen, they're going to take that paper, they're going to check that. Like, and you don't know what's on their mind that day. It could be like, man, I just watched Joel get off on Giannis in Milwaukee, right? Like, I could just watch Giannis carry Milwaukee to a win. And, like, so you never know what that one thing is to, like, tilt someone. And because it's human beings, it's not a computer. You, you, emotions is a part of it. Like, your emotion towards it is, is a part of it. If one of these guys leave you on a high note, your emotions may take over. And so I think at this point, like, just like the, the shot, it matters at this point. But again, it won't be a duel of like, oh, man, Giannis had 37, Joel had 33. Like, it's going to be who dominated in a fashion to help their team win the game. And not that if you lose this game, you don't win MVP. But I think that's what it boils down to just because of point of season we're in. That's going to be a wrap from this episode of the Draymond Green Show. Make sure you all check it out. Got an interview coming up later this week. Check that out. Stay locked in on the NBA. It's getting real good. Let's go, Dubs. We need more road wins. Until next time, peace. What's up, everybody? It's Draymond Green. Make sure you subscribe to the Volumes YouTube channel below so you don't miss any more of this great content going forward.